Hi everyone, I'm Brian Wayne, Assistant Superintendent, uh, Supervision of Schools for the Melville School District. Um, taking an opportunity today to talk to you a little bit about uh, response to intervention. Um, I think it's important if we're going to talk about response to intervention that we start with a little history. It's important to go back roughly say 15 years ago, uh, that's when I was still in the classroom, and uh, there was a lot of talk about differentiating instruction, which of course made perfect sense. Yes, we want to individualize instruction, get every single kid what they, uh, what they need individually, um, but the problem from a, from a teacher's viewpoint, I can tell you personally, was how can we make this happen when you have 20, 25, 30 kids? Uh, if you're a middle school or high school person and you're seeing you know, 100, 150 kids over the course of the day. And then we would try to put interventions in place for, for the child and, and then we'd try to get back together later and, and, and we'd talk about whether we thought they were working. But I think that was a key point was we thought they were working, but we were never sure. And that's because the interventions weren't uh, scientifically based. We had no way of monitoring if the student was progressing. We didn't know if they were getting to the level we needed to get them to. Right about that time, going back of, you know, roughly 10 years now at this point, we started hearing about response to intervention. And the Melville School District uh, was invited to join into a grant with uh, the Rockwood School Districts and the uh, Webster Grove School District and the Kirkwood School District to be uh, the first schools in St. Louis County and some of the first in Missouri to start working with a response to intervention model. And so um, we started off with five of our elementary schools and so those uh, five elementary schools were the pioneers of the Melville School District. And as they started having success, it really became a, a grassroots uh, movement. It was not a, a mandate from central office that other schools would have to start implementing response to intervention or RTI. We watched that grow and it's evolved over the course of the last 10 years to here we are now where uh, every school in the Melville School District uh, utilizes uh, response to intervention to meet those children's needs. I'm very proud of the Melville School District. I, I firmly believe that we are one of the leaders in Missouri in response to intervention and uh, actually one of the uh, leaders in the United States. Uh, I've been to national conferences. We have sent uh, many of our people to the national RTI conferences and, and I can tell you that our practices are, are right up there with any of the school districts in, in the country. Now that I've given you a little bit of an overview of how response to intervention came to the Melville School District and evolved to the uh, fine program that it is now. Um, we'll now give uh, Dr. Tina Plummer, our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, an opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the uh, specifics of how it's implemented in the Melville School District. Instruction at Tier 1 focuses on implementing the core instruction that all students receive. Tier 1 should focus on implementation of Melville School District's curriculum and assessments. Instruction at Tier 2 focuses on students who require targeted supplemental instruction. This targeted supplemental instruction is in addition to Tier 1. Tier 2 interventions are determined by the grade level or SMART teams utilizing data through the problem solving process. Intervention at Tier 2 should consist of approximately 30 minutes of supplemental instruction three to five days a week. Interventions must target specific skill deficits, be research-based, and implemented with fidelity. Tier 2 intervention groups are flexible and students move in and out of groups based upon progress monitoring data. A small percentage of students who have received Tier 1 instruction and Tier 2 supplemental intervention may require a more intense intervention if the progress monitoring data indicates that the student is not meeting their prescribed goal. Students involved in Tier 3 interventions should receive core instruction, Tier 1, supplemental instruction, Tier 2, and intensive intervention, Tier 3. 
Tier 3 intervention may consist of individualized or small group instruction, 60 minutes per day, five days a week. Melville's district assessment plan outlines the various forms of assessments that are given to students within the district. These assessments are utilized by grade level teams and SMART teams to support the need for Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions. Students participating in Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions will have additional progress monitoring. Progress monitoring will be completed either weekly or bi-weekly depending on the student's plan. This information will be utilized by the grade level and or SMART teams to determine whether the student is making sufficient progress on their stated goals. We look at reading data. Um, there are several points of reading data that we look at. There, um, we do progress monitoring throughout the year. Um, their gates McGinnity scores, their MAP scores, their grades, teacher recommendations. Um, we also can pull them out and look at scores on individual um, records of reading that they do and put all those together and then determine if um, if the data says that their skills are below where they need to be for that particular grade level. The problem solving process has five main steps. Problem identification, problem analysis, plan development, plan implementation, and plan evaluation. The key component throughout the process is the use of data. Data is used to help define the problem and collect it throughout the implementation of the intervention plan to determine the effectiveness of the plan. The problem solving documentation form is utilized to document these five steps as teams review data and develop an intervention plan for students. The documentation form is to be completed on each student who is receiving an intervention. The documentation is kept and reviewed each time the team meets regarding that student. The problem solving documentation form outlines the student's strengths and the two most important concerns. Teams utilize data to further analyze the concern. For example, a teacher is concerned about a student's reading level and the student's ability to decode. The teacher knows that the problem is because the student's Ames Web scores are at the 10th percentile, MAP scores in the area of English language arts are below basic, and the DRA developmental reading assessment level is two grade levels below. The data is documented on the form and can be used as a baseline data for goal setting. When data teams are reviewing data to determine the need for interventions, they need to be using multiple sources of data to support their decision. The various sources of data could include MAP, Ames Web, Classroom Grades, Common Assessments, Gates McGinnity, and STAR Reading and Math Assessments. The key components to a goal include the direction, whether we want to increase, decrease, or maintain, the area for the direction, the skill or behavior we're wanting to focus on, the measurement, how we will measure the progress, and the condition. Independently, the student will work on this or with some use of an accommodation. An example of a goal would be something like this. Susie will increase her reading fluency independently from blank words per minute to blank words per minute as measured by weekly progress monitoring probes. The team will determine the appropriate intervention, implementer, initiation date, frequency of intervention, and the next review date. So we've had great resources for um, them to actually monitor them themselves and actually put the data into the computer and they get a great printout, a whole um, graphing chart where they see their progress going either up or down, which has been great. Um, and they love it because they know what their goal is and they know what they need to do to get there. For Tier 2 interventions, the parents will receive a letter informing them of the intervention. This letter can be found on the district resource page. For Tier 3 interventions, the parents will receive a letter giving their permission. Due to the intense nature of Tier 3 interventions, parents must give permission for their child to participate. At any time, the parent has the right to request an evaluation for special education as stated in the parent letter. If a parent requests an evaluation for special education, we follow our current procedures. The team will review the plan every six to eight weeks after the initial implementation. The purpose of the meeting is to review the progress monitoring data and determine if the student has met their prescribed goal or is on track to meet their goal. If the student is on track to meet the goal or has met the goal, the team can determine to stop the intervention, decrease frequency, or maintain progress monitoring when the intervention is discontinued. 
If the student did not meet the goal or is not on track to meet the goal, the team can review the current intervention for changes to the intervention itself, increase the frequency of the intervention, change the intervention, or continue to monitor. It's like a think tank. You come in and you have the principal, you have the counselor, you have um, teachers from all different grade levels. And we, as the third grade team and all the teams, the grade levels here at Woolwin, we all meet on a weekly basis. And we have those kids that we talk about day in and day out. And when you come to the table at our RTI meeting, it's, it's pretty powerful. I mean, you know, we want all students to be successful and we want all students to achieve, but we want them to feel confident and have that self-esteem too. So it's really neat to be a part of.